All right, well, welcome everyone to How to Achieve Gold and Platinum in Green Star Homes. This is a uh, continuing series of what will likely be a four uh, part series. Um, we've already went through the basics of Green Star, how to get to the basic level, and then we went through silver. We're doing gold and platinum together as one, and then we'll be looking at the badges in a further session. This course is brought to you by the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Um, today, I will be your moderator. My name is Brett Little. I'll be the speaker here today too. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I am the program manager here at the Green Home Institute. Uh, like most of our courses, this course is approved for multiple continuing education units, as well as um, all five pillars of green under our Certified Green Home Professional Program, Energy, Materials, Health, Water, Place. We're going to cover them all uh, in this session, as well as AIA, Health, Welfare, and Safety, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. And just real quick before we get started, um, if you haven't become a member yet, make sure to check it out. You get instant access to our sessions. And one of the benefits is free Green Star certification for the time being on uh, smaller single family projects. Uh, and so, uh, and discounts on Green Star certification as we're gonna be talking about, as well as discounts on plan reviews and training and all that. Another membership benefit is our partnership with Green Builder Media, who on June 23rd is relaunching their six part series, Housing 2.0 with Sam Rashkin. You do not want to miss that. And so you can get a significant uh, discounted access to that um, on Housing uh, 2.0 if you become a member. And member announcement, we always love to share what our members are up to. Matheson Matheson Architects has been named the best young firm by Architecture A Plus Awards uh, in the best, best young firm category. So very grateful to them. Uh, they're uh, one of their owners, co-owners uh, actually lives um, in a pretty cool green home uh, as net zero already. And so we have a whole video of that on our YouTube. You can check that out, but become a member. This is what our members are. They are uh, doing great things there. Um, and so make sure to check out our membership and you can too. All right, so let's get into it. How to achieve gold and then platinum under the Green Star Homes certification program. As I mentioned, as we're going through this, whether you're watching this now live or the recording, we wanna hear from you right away. Um, and so post uh, you know, into, into, the, into the chat box, uh, your thoughts, your comments, and we'll respond to them both now and in the future. Um, what are your thoughts? What are you doing? What are you up to? And for those of you here live today, feel free to introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you coming from? Uh, what's your background? Have you done Green Star? What certified levels have you gotten to? We'd love to hear from you. One thing that's important to know is that this is um, not a technical course. We're just going, to some extent, we're just going to be focused on going through the requirements, not the sort of mechanics or the hows and why. And so if you want that, you'll wanna head over to our seven part series on basics of residential green building and remodeling um, to really take that technical deep dive. And then on each green item of a home, we have you other resources for you that can take you even further. So that's where you wanna go. And this course plus that course gets you well on your way to becoming a certified green home professional uh, and associate. So a lot, of, um, a lot of different benefits by doing that. So as a reminder, you've hopefully completed the series on the certified session. You got a good sense of how to get to that and then silver. So now we're going to get into gold. And some of the other resources that you need um, for this course to follow along is, is both the manual and the um, checklist. So here is the manual here. Uh, and actually you can find the checklist right here in the first link to access that. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, you wanna have uh, access to that uh, checklist as well. So here it is. And one thing you'll wanna note is we're gonna be going through the platinum level um, today. 
So you'll want to, uh, here it is. So basically it's based on what kind of project you might be looking to do, renovation, new con renovation or new construction, and then is it multifamily? And then, so hopefully you've already looked at the certified and silver levels. So now we're gonna be on the gold items and then the platinum items. So this is a really good thing for you to, to follow along with as we're going. Now, what you wanna do is go to file, make a copy and then create your own copy so you can manipulate this form or you can go in and download it to Excel and uh, you can, you know, you can use it on Excel. Um, we're upgrading the Excel functionality a little bit um, here into the future. So you'll get, you know, more information on that as we improve it, but you can either use Google or you can use Excel, whatever you prefer. But right now, like I mentioned, we're going to be going through each of these items um, line by line, uh, all the way from gold to platinum. So you can follow along there, probably put your notes in here. And especially if you're starting a real project, it'd be a great time for you to start filling that out. All right, so you've got the resources. So we're gonna start actually way back up at the top um, because some of these items, um, some, of the, some of the items in the manual actually cover all levels of certification because they're pretty, pretty minor in how they change. So the first one we're going to be looking at um, is the over uh, the uh, the home energy cost and rating performance testing opportunities section. So in this section, hopefully you're familiar with that. You know that there are certain levels of energy efficiency you need to achieve in a new or existing home. So uh, to get uh, for for to starting at the gold, and then we're going to cover gold and platinum now, just for this session anyway. This section. And a couple other the, like this, but uh, for for existing homes, our we would like to see all homes achieve at least a score of eight to get gold, a uh, home energy score, uh, and then for um, uh, for platinum, we'd like to see a score of ten before you start counting solar, so efficiency score of ten um, to get to the platinum level. Now, if you remember, if you're using an alternative tool to do this that's okay, you can do that. And so you just need to match the weather station data um, by uh, following the resource link there. Every weather station in the country has been evaluated by the Department of Energy. And so they assign uh, energy, uh, uh, an energy use per year target going from one through 10. Uh, and so just figure out which weather station, um, which airport really, sorry, which airport is closest to you and then line it up that way. And so we went over that again in the basic, I believe in the basic one. So you can go back and look at that uh, if you need more information. But ideally you're using a certified home energy score. For new construction, we're looking at uh, getting homes at least to 24.5 MBTUs or 7,200 kilowatt hours a year of energy uh, or less or equivalent of a HERS 30. For um, platinum on new construction, we're looking at about 17.1 uh, MBTUs per year and 5,400 kilowatt hours or 5,400 kilowatt hours or a HERS 20. Uh, and again, remember this is per unit in multifamily. So not for the entire building, you'd never make it, but on a per unit basis, it's much more energy efficient to use multifamily housing. Uh, so. Uh, so we're not looking at ASHRAE 90.1, but we have projects like a big mixed use project being built underway that uses ASHRAE 90.1 to tease out that energy usage per year in MBTUs. So you can use a tool, whatever tool you like, that's approved, passive house, you name it. We actually have a whole series on comparing uh, the residential energy rating systems, which ones work better, how and why and what makes sense for your project. So you can check that out if you're trying to still figure out, hey, which one of these do I use? But like I mentioned, we specifically call out HERS index ratings. Um, that's more towards new construction and multifamily, ideally home energy scores, which is more towards existing and single family. And so then what's going on? Your uh, hired energy rater is gonna go in and they're gonna evaluate the project at the end, at the very least, perhaps at the beginning to give you an idea of what to do. They're looking at all sorts of things, blower door testing, uh, energy labels, insulation, 
uh, you name it. Uh, they're going to be looking at all of these different items uh, to determine the energy rating of the home. And then ultimately, they're going to give you a score um, on the home. And so, like I said, you want to have that home energy score at least an eight um, to, to achieve a gold level and then a 10, uh, not counting solar, uh, to achieve the, the platinum level uh, on existing housing. Um, one cool thing that the Department of Energy has done just recently is they have released uh, a, a way for you who, who's not a certified assessor to actually go in and see how your project may score out before you hire an assessor to come and do the work or do the preliminary evaluation. And it's not really that difficult. You just need to go in and know some key features of the home, um, which is pretty helpful uh, of the address, you know, you name it, go through all this, and then you can outspits your rating. It's not certified rating, it's an uncertified rating. Uh, and then you can tweak it a little bit based on what your plans are. We're gonna do a whole webinar on how to do a self-evaluation of both new and existing homes with a bunch of different tools we have. Again, before you hire that assessor, you might wanna feel confident um, that we're headed in the right direction. So at this point, I wanna open it up and again, just you know, what, are, what kind of energy assessment tools are you using? What kind of ratings are you using? Um, what are you seeing out there? What are you getting? Uh, what kind of specific questions? I might be able to take one here um, before we move on to the, um, the next item. All right, so let's move on to the next item that's sort of all encompassing, and that is water conservation. This again is another one of those items that spans through all the different certification levels. And honestly, this one is really one that holds a lot of project teams back from getting above certified or silver. We'll find some really great builders who are achieving net zero homes, doing really good work with ventilation. And then we come in and we find that they've got really high flow water use. And so this, you know, I'll be honest, this one really holds teams back, especially when they're relying on um, the owners to make the selection. Owners are selecting things based on looks and not necessarily based on flow rates. So it does set up a bit of a, a challenge that we need to have conversation when uh, the owners are involved in specking the products to say, look, you know, how do we meet both uh, aesthetics, functionality, and these days supply, uh, I would, I'll be honest with that, uh, and uh, you know, low flow. And so there's what I would argue a performance pathway to do that, but let's talk first about the prescriptive pathway. So the prescriptive pathway builds, tries to keep it simple. We're just looking at toilets, shower heads, and faucets. And so if you can achieve for gold, a shower head of 1.5 gallons per minute or less on average, so if you have multiple bathrooms, this is an average, bathroom aerators at less than one gallon per minute and toilets that are less than one gallon per flush, you're gold, right? Good to go, you know, that plus the leak testing, that's all we're looking for. Now, you can also, again, this is where it comes in where, you know, maybe an owner wants that high flow shower. Okay, great. Let's look at the home water score then. And we just need to get a home water score of five or higher to get to gold. And I'll show you that in a second. Now to get to platinum, we're looking at driving the prescriptive rate down to 1.25 gallons per minute on shower heads, less than one on uh, toilets. Um, so I misspoke. It's uh, 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 equal to or one for gold, less than one for platinum, and bathroom aerators are 0.5 or equal to gallons per minute. So again, that's the platinum. Uh, and then if, if, if they want to get to platinum using the performance path, the home water score, we need to see at least a six um, to achieve that goal. So let's take a look at your um, workbook that you hopefully have open up and you're following along in. If you head over to the water score tab, and we have a whole webinar on this, and we're going to do an updated one, so we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Each of these are set up to the default of what your average home has. And so, again, if you're trying to help your clients, you want to be sitting in the design stage doing this, not at the final stage when it's all done, working with us on a preliminary rating. 
but this is where you're going to be driving the flow rates down. So you might put in, you know, 0.8 uh, vacuum assisted toilets, right? Um, single flush toilets, and you might want to use a, you know, a 0.25 shower head, and like I said, 0.5 aerator. So I'm kind of putting in the platinum, and then kitchen, you know, getting that water use down in the kitchen, using uh, Energy Star clothes washers, using an Energy Star dishwasher. Um, you know, again, there's not going to be a leak in, in the home. So again, look, we're at already uh, a gold level here and we haven't even got to outdoor water usage yet. Um, but, you know, that's where we're at. And so this is one of those examples where, uh, you know, let's say the owner, again, they want that really high flow shower head uh, or, you know, we, we get um, affordable housing projects that get really nervous about the toilet. So again, they want that higher flow <clears throat> toilet. You know, we know they work, but okay, people get nervous. Um, so where else can we go to find and save water? And that's where you might want to start looking at gray water use, which you can put in here based on another calculation you do, or rainwater use, um, rainwater catchment. Those are all types of things you can do. Um, for outdoor water, that's where you might need to start looking. And so outdoor water we're just gonna have you fill out the EPA's water budget checklist. And in the checklist, you'll put in your project, and we have a whole webinar on this and a bunch of resources on how to do it. You'll put in what your predicted water use is for your site. Let's say it's 30,000 gallons, had you done nothing else. And then you'll say, oh, you know, we used water efficiency practices, smart irrigation, and we dropped it down to an estimated 5,000. So again, you can see we can start driving up water rates and it's gonna be really hard, you know, to get to those higher levels without going outside. And if you don't have any, if you're just a multifamily building on a tight lot, you know, then you have um, 100% savings here. So we would have to sort of manipulate the number a little bit um, to get you up to those, uh, to those savings uh, on what you should have been. And so work with us on that. We haven't had anyone reach out on that yet. Um, but that's another thing you can do here, um, you know, for water conservation. Now I have to put this all back. So when people get a fresh copy of the checklist, it'll be functioning uh, there. All right. Um, and then again, you're going to be working with your Green Home Institute inspector or with me, or, you know, you're going to be hopefully doing photo documentation, getting real up close of all the listings and the ratings on these devices, especially again for our main devices, the aerator, the toilet and the shower head and documentation for you know landscaping if we're using it or whatever else um, it might be. So at this point, I wanna open it up to some questions about water conservation or water efficiency. Uh, what are you using? What flow rates are you typically using on projects? What challenges are you having? Supply challenges, cost challenges, you know, what are the barriers to, you know, driving water or what are you doing, um, you know, within your projects? All right, so moving on, uh, this is a new credit in the evolution or requirement in the evolution of ventilation from uh, the sort of basic level to the uh, silver level. In this case, we want to have balanced ventilation. And I want to be clear that balanced ventilation does not mean uh, recovery. Uh, it, it could and it should, but it does not mean recovery. And it can be intermittent or it can be uh, continuous. It can be both. Um, and one alternative approach for those of you in warmer climates is to do natural ventilation calculations, typically per the ASHRAE protocol. So we would just need to see that. And there's some cool biomimicry studies out there of like wind tunnels and um, all that. So we'd, we'd love to see it. We just don't have specific documentation or, or details for it just yet. So if you have any recommendations, let us know. Some different strategies here. Again, you want to make sure the same amount of air that's coming into the house is going out at the same rate around the same time. Um, so, you know, uh, some different strategies here to make sure you achieve it is to upsize your fans, uh, which can be, you know, difficult to hit the ASHRAE 62.2 2016 standard, which is a lot of air moving and then to avoid lots of bends and ducts and kinks when you're putting in new systems. Um, one simple tool you can use to calculate this is an open source free tool called RedCalc. 
at redkelk.com. You can find an ASH rate 62.2 2016, and you can use it in junction with blower door testing. So leakier homes, um, you know, we don't want homes to be leaky, but leakier homes can use less ventilation. So you can use that, or you can use your energy raters, ventilation report, or, you know, whatever you like to, um, to, 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 to show that off. And then also to verify it again, um, is that you need to have uh, uh, someone come out and do uh, a test on the system to make sure that it's pulling at the proper amount, that it's exhausting at the proper amount, and that you're hitting um, that uh, appropriate standard. One example here is one of our projects there currently uh, have their home at the silver level of Green Star, and they're wanting to update it to gold, which is one of the goals of the program, that continuous improvement. You know, you certify it once and you're not done. We don't say, see you later, like, let's keep improving. So I've been going back and forth with this particular owner and, and they're like, all right, here's what I think we can do to get to the gold level is we can increase the air supply from the current continuous low setting um, to a medium setting to reach the, you know, the ASHRAE standard. Um, and they're, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we put in a, in a, in a, and so this is the supply on the furnace fan. And they then will add an ECM motor to the furnace to make it more energy efficient, which is something that's really important. And then they're going to go into their bath fan and they're going to replace the timer switches on their bath fans to have it run continuously um, uh, at the, 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 the 50 CFM level so that it can match the supply air coming in. So again, their current system is set up one way. They're like, we want to get to gold. So we're going to boost, um, we're going to boost the supply. We're going to get a brand new switch, have it wired in by the electrician to boost the exhaust. So that's a cool example. And that we're going to be putting out a case study on to, you know, get that continuous improvement that we want to see. So what questions do you have or thoughts do you have, or you can share, again, we're saying this to everyone, put it down in the comment section on uh, your, you know, your approach to ventilation. Are you using balanced? Are you not quite there yet? What's holding you back from getting to that balanced level um, with your projects? All right, so this is a pretty simple one, um, but uh, cold water lines, um, if you're building new, keep the cold water lines out of unconditioned space. That's an easy one. If you've got an existing project, those cold water lines for the gold level need to be, if they're in unconditioned space, you can either begin conditioning that space, which has a lot of negative drawbacks as far as energy use goes, uh, and your system might be undersized, or you can just try to insulate uh, with an R4 pipe wrap as much of it as you can reach um, uh, to, and this is to prevent sweating and durability issues, moisture buildup as well. Good idea to wrap the, the hot water pipes too, um, but we're in this case, just looking for, um, we're just looking for uh, the, the cold water pipes in this case from a durability, from the materials pedal standpoint. So. All right, so this is something pretty new to Green Star that I'm pretty excited about. Um, this is the idea that there's a proliferation now of multiple different devices that are certified uh, that can measure the air quality in our homes so that we can know for sure we've got you know, decent air quality or better air quality. We don't know all the data all the time, but it's, it's headed into a direction where we have more information than we've ever had. And so for the gold level, we are looking that there's at least for now, starting now, uh, at least one device in a main living area uh, that can monitor air quality and report that information to the occupant so they can make informed decisions. This is also an alternative pathway for projects who are unable to use, um, you, know, uh, you know, who are using fireplaces that are un not sealed well, or who are using um, range hoods that are not ducted uh, properly when there's challenges in existing homes. So what we're looking for is the ability to measure carbon dioxide, total volatile organic compounds, humidity, temperature, and PM 2.5. These need to be certified either to the reset standard or there's a new ASTM standard that we're still trying to get some more information on 
that you could also have it um, be approved for. And if you want to go to the badge opportunity, you might want to look for um, devices that can also measure radon, PM1, PM10, and as a component of TVOCs, uh, formaldehyde, which is a you know dangerous um, substance to be having. Uh, so those have to be um, built into the uh, into the uh, into the system. So are any of you uh, using uh, air quality measurements within your projects, uh, or what are your thoughts, or what are you seeing out there? Um, you know, we can also accept the use of an industrial hygienist to come and do um, sampling to some extent, uh, but those are ongoing discussions if that's something you want to use in your project. All right, so um, moving on to the next requirement. Um, for the gold level, we want to see all electric or solar water heating, or really the removing removement of combustion uh, from heating water. You should be able to do it electrically at this point. It shouldn't be a problem. So that can be done many ways. That can be a standard electric resistance tank, which is going to use quite a bit of energy, to be honest with you. Um, so that's why a heat pump system is going to be the most efficient system to pick um, for water heating, of course. And then also solar water heating, which is something I know has went out of style. Most people aren't doing it anymore. But if it is something you want to do, you certainly can use solar water heating or uh, geothermal ground source heat pump water. We're not, uh, it's, it's less about you know, limiting you to what you can use and just saying that ultimately, you know, avoid combustion. And so you're really your two other choices are electric, which is indirectly done through heat pumps or geo or solar, um, which I think solar still tends to have electric backup, but not always. And so if there are other options out there that are not um, combustion related or oil based related, certainly we'd be interested in hearing it. But right now, um, you know, those are the systems, you know, we'd like to see in place. And the same goes for cooking, um, shifting all cooking over to electric. So whether that be induction, whether that be um, just standard electric, which is going to use a lot more energy than induction and doesn't cook as well for those who really like to cook. We're not limiting it to induction, but we're saying, again, remove that combustion, remove that, you know, uh, cause of uh, and trigger of asthma that clear more evidence showing that and that that is a problem and one thing we're learning too is that the gas stoves are putting off nit nitrous oxide no2 and the ventilation systems the rain sheds actually can't even remove that nitrous oxide from the air um, at, a, at a at a safe level and so we're just you know we don't want a green star gold home that is polluting people on the inside so at this point we have to ask for the removal in existing homes of gas uh, or uh, in new homes, just put an electric. Again, this is at the at the gold level. Same goes for the dryer. Uh, no reason it needs to be gas. There's all sorts of uh, great uh, electric dryers. They can be traditional dryers. They can be condensing, which work really well. They eliminate the plug, uh, the, the hole in the wall, or they can be heat pump dryers, which are very efficient and can help reduce uh, uh, loads on the grid as well. Costly, but efficient. And so again, we're not limiting it to what type of electric dryer. Again, just remove that gas line from the dryer and put in an electric one uh, to help hit the gold level. Now, following on that, we're also saying that uh, for both new and existing homes that the we're, that if you are using a gas furnace, that it at least needs to be paired with a heat pump. And it has to be a cold weather climate heat pump in zones four or higher uh, that can also operate still down until the temperatures get too cold and the costs go up too much to where you'd want to switch over to the gas system. And so this can be paired with an existing gas furnace, assuming that existing gas furnace meets the qualifications of the lower levels of Green Star. It doesn't have a combustion analyzation issue. It's not naturally drafting um, and that it's you know, properly sized and all that. Um, but it can, you know, it, can, uh, it, it can be used and paired with an older furnace. Um, but if, again, if you've got a project that's just too nervous to go all electric, uh, this, there's new technologies, new 
products coming out, ones that have been out for a very long time where you can do a hybrid approach. Um, and so this is an option and they've all even have geothermal systems now uh, that can integrate with well water and be connected to the existing gas furnace or propane furnace um, as well. Uh, one alternative approach to this um, is, you know, we would also allow uh, fireplaces uh, to be used as backup heat in climate zones for higher uh, to be paired with the heat pump, which could be done, uh, or a wood stove heater could be done um, as well. Um, so, you know, we know that our health is impacted by poor air quality, but it's becoming increasingly clear that poor water quality is harming our health. Michigan has been the canary in the coal mine for what is now rapidly unfolding across the country. And so what we wanna see is that it's been thought through on the project, which is very hyper-local. Every project has a different water system, but get the water system test, test the groundwater outside. And at the very least, there's gotta be something to design in case a problem does occur in the future to avoid whatever that problem might be. So you would want to work and try to figure out what the water problem could be and then think about it. You know, obviously a reverse osmosis system is going to be the most straightforward path and it just needs to be for the drinking water. It doesn't need to be um, for the entire house. Unless of course you've got a real problem on your hands where you know um, something might be getting into the system and going like getting uh, you know getting gasified during um, a shower. Uh, that has, and I have heard of that occurring before too. So at the very least, there does need to be some sort of filtration to protect people's health with their drinking water um, to some extent. And, you know, that can look different, like in a city that might be just removing fluoride and chlorine from the water. You know, that's a simple solution because a lot of cities have good water, um, but it just depends on, again, what's going on and work with us to help figure that out. But we want to think through water. If you're on well water, it does need to be updated to an on-demand system as well um, so that it's only running when it needs to, just not um, you know, continuously. All right, uh, and then for those building new or incorporating new structural wood products into uh, their renovation, those need to be certified either to um, FSC, Ford Stewardship Council, or SFI, Sustainability Forestry um, Initiative, or you know there are other relevant certifications depending on your country. Um, and so again, what that looks like is we're kind of collecting that chain of custody on wood that's coming from tropical areas only. So if you're specifying wood, new wood only from um, Canada or the US or in Europe, it's not as a big deal, but if it's tropical wood, um, it needs to have that chain of custody. And again, we're only we're not asking existing homes to go back and look at all this, just new homes. Otherwise, a lot of times we'll just get a, a letter from the wood supplier, uh, and uh, you know we'll we'll look at that, and that's and that's just fine. So saying where they where they supplied their wood from. So. Um, for those of you doing um, multifamily, you're gonna be doing blower door tests for another reason, not just for energy efficiency, but what you're trying to do is figure out the compartmentalization of the units to figure out if they're leaking internally and spreading possibly polluted air, maybe air full of COVID at this point, who knows what these days, there's been some evidence of that in between units. And so we have a whole standard that we have set um, depending on, again, whether it's new construction, depending on what, uh, or it's existing, and then depending on whether you're trying to achieve, um, uh, you know, what level of certification on how tight those units need to be. And so you're looking at air leakage per wall enclosure. Um, and sometimes a lot of that leakage is only going outside. So, you know, we might be able to have a conversation on how to, to navigate that because obviously we're most concerned here about the leakage that's happening between units in single family attached and multifamily 
housing. Um, so what we're looking at here is called it's the reduced air leakage between credits in attached housing. And uh, if you're on the workbook or manual here, you can just see for um, gold, we're looking at 0.23 CFM uh, uh, on new construction and 0.3 on renovation. For platinum, we're looking at 0.5 on new construction and 2.3 on renovation. And so there's a whole formula. If you're working with a HERS rater, that calculation will come out of their energy reports. Um, but that's something we just need to make sure those structures are tight and leaking less, again, just depending on what level you're trying to achieve of, of Green Star. All right, and then lastly, we're looking at embodied energy. And this is something really brand new to Green Star, and it's only for new construction. Because if you're doing a renovation, you're already reducing your embodied energy by restoring and retaining uh, energy in those materials. So you, at this point, we're not asking you to look at that. There might be some additional badges there. Um, and so we're deferring, this is very new, and we're gonna have some folks on coming on later to do a webinar on this. Uh, we're looking at the passive buildings of Canada and builders for climate action who led the first of its kind embodied energy study across Canada. And we find that it's probably equivalent here in the United States and elsewhere. And so the Green Star program will require reductions from the average of 154 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per meter squared. And so we can translate that to feet. And so again, we're looking at a 10, a 15% reduction from that number for gold and 30% for platinum. And again, it's for just the certified level, you just have to measure your carbon footprint. Um, so there's a whole bunch of tools coming out. Um, that can be used to calculate this. Passive House has them, Beam has them, um, L3C has them. We've done some webinars on that. So we're gonna be providing some additional education and training on how to do this um, for new construction and what the benefits are to reduce that embodied or upfront carbon um, for these projects. And there are some alternatives to that. So building smaller will inherently use less embodied energy. So there are some workarounds when the project is built smaller. Uh, not using concrete at all is a low hanging fruit win um, or uh, reducing the amount of concrete I believe is written in there. And then there are some potential, uh, uh, you know, ex expanding the size of the solar array to offset it to is another choice. And we're looking at some other alternatives um, pathways for that. So. Mm. All right, so we're pretty far into this now, and so, and we're just getting into the platinum level, so we're a little bit further behind um, than I had thought, uh, and that's that's on me. I wasn't sure. I thought we could get all through gold and platinum. We don't have very much more to go, so I'm going to continue to um, wrap up the session, but I did want to let you all know briefly here for those of you who do need to get going, um, you know, this will be recorded. So we'll have the rest of it um, up on our site. But if you wanna stick around and, you know, just finish off the platinum level uh, with us here, um, where am I at here? But for those of you who, uh, you know, do need to go, as I mentioned, this will be recorded. It'll be up on our uh, website. And so you can check that out. Um, and get access to the recording and watch the remaining of it. If you're uh, watching this on demand in the future, not right now, you wanna take that quiz with an 80% passing rate to get your continuing education. And again, for those of you who have stayed this whole time, you're approved for your continuing education. So you'll see that from certs at gutenbergcerts.com and you'll be able to um, uh, pick that up and see that within your span if you mark that as safe. And again, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors who allow us to put this program together and allow us to do these webinars and do all the work that we do. Um, so for those of you who wanna hang out and keep talking about platinum, we're gonna keep going through the, the conversation, but thanks to those of you who did stay as long as you could. And then, like I said, we'll send this out and you'll be able to get caught up uh, on the platinum level here soon. 
But like I mentioned, we've covered certified, we've covered silver, gold. And so the next step up is platinum. And then we'll be doing a new session as we start to launch more of the, um, some of the badges, which I'll talk about here briefly. So this is the one that trips up a lot of existing homes. Pretty easy to do on new these days, but we're still seeing problems. And this is photos of what not to do. If you are using duct systems, the, uh, the duct systems must be fully ducted. Um, so that can be flex or hard duct. Uh, you cannot have um, things like this sort of uh, padding here, the stapled padding, or you can see here on the right here, you can see it's running in the joists. So if you've got an existing home, that's gotta be repaired and fixed if you wanna to get to the platinum level, which again, I understand is very costly, uh, but it has a lot of benefits like air quality and ensuring good air delivery. I have a home that can't, uh, that, you know, they're ducted through the joists. And I, you know, right now the living room is baking because it's furthest away from the heater or in this case, the air conditioning. So uh, it's always off about three degrees, maybe even four degrees in the extremes because it, you know, it's ducted through the joists. And so uh, from a platinum home, we would expect that to be fixed. From a new home, easy enough to do it right from the start. And then also we're looking at full electrification of the heating system. Cooling system should be easy enough. What else are you gonna use? The heating system in all climates needs to be uh, fully electrified with um, those in colder climate climates, there is the allowability for a backup wood stove heater to help supplement in some of the coldest of cold times. Um, so that can be all sorts of different strategies, geothermal, mini splits, air source heat pumps, radiant systems, you name it. We're looking at avoiding gas, propane, oil, um, combustion, and using full electrification um, for so building off that balanced ventilation system from the gold level, we're now looking at um, either uh, having in platinum recovery or smart ventilation systems. Um, so you get to pick one. And so recovery is just basically energy recovery or heat recovery ventilator, right? That's all that is, pretty straightforward. Um, but for smart systems as an alternative, uh, you can use a system, again, that can communicate, that's first of all, detecting air quality, like we talked about back at the gold level. And then when it detects poor air quality, it will, the system will be running low and then the system will fire up um, to uh, exhaust. And so that's another way to save energy. Now, ideally having smart and recovery is the best way to go. And we're looking at some badges for that. Um, but you get to pick, is it smart or is it recovery? Which system do you wanna use um, for a platinum level house? And same deal here, whether which one it is or not, we need to be able to make sure it's in compliance with the ASHRAE 62.2 2016 standard. So again, that's done through testing, documentation of the system, verification of the install and all that. And we have a whole session set up here where we talk about all the different various smart ventilation systems that you can check out if that's a direction you wanna head into. Different ones that exist all the way from the Cadillac version where it, it does conditioning and ventilation, uh, all the way down to just simple systems where you've got a device communicating with range hoods and bath fans and turning them on and off as pollution is detected within the home. All right, uh, and then moving on from that, we wanna see homes that have hue. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention too, we are looking at uh, ventilating dehumidifiers as an alternative pathway, as a third alternative pathway in certain climates where it is relevant. So, and cue that in, uh, we are also requiring humidity control for Green Star. And again, that's gonna be very different depending on what climate you're in and where you're located. Are you having um, humidification issues? Are you having dehumidification issues or is it both? And so you need to be able to address and have systems in place to address both if you're in a climate where both are a problem. And so again, we have a whole session on both dehumidification and humidification strategies. 
that you can check out and learn a little bit more about what can be done uh, to um, you know, achieve that. Um, and then another thing we're looking at here is th this is a, something you can use that your raters, inspectors can use if they can't determine the flow rate of the systems in the house if they've got old systems on existing homes. And that's why we made this video. But more than that, we wanted to show you that for Green Star, we want to see that you've got good hot water flow and instant hot water and efficient hot water flow. So currently we're using the DOE's uh, zero energy ready requirements until we build out some better requirements that we're working on. Um, that'll be a little more straightforward. So we have a resource for revision seven, page seven, no more than 0.6 gallons or 2.3 liters of water shall be collected from the hot water fixture before hot water is delivered. And so there's a definition there on what is hot water. And so the inspector can go in, do this bucket test on the furthest fixture, and then have the temperature sensor in there just to figure out, are you getting hot water? And then again, we're coming out with all sorts of resources. We're doing another training here with Gary at the end of the summer that he's gonna actually have uh, evaluate people's plumbing systems to see how efficient they are and talk about all the different ways plumbing systems can be redesigned so that you can achieve these results. And so we're not prescriptively telling you how to design your plumbing system. We're saying you need to achieve these results, but hey, here's some education that we have available for you if you wanna work with your plumbers to get uh, this to happen. And so there's many different ways to, to get there, but we wanna make sure that we've got instant hot water um, and that there's you know, less water waste and energy waste to get that to the tap. Keeping on the plumbing idea, just like we now are monitoring our energy, just like we're now monitoring our air quality, we need to start monitoring our water usage, especially at the platinum level. So all projects now at the platinum level need to have a device that can both detect water leaks when a water leak is present and a device that can detect water usage. A lot of times the utility companies give a monthly report. Sometimes it's not even by month. And if you're on well water, you get no report. So it's important that we understand how much water we're using and being able to detect that water use in real time and then make informed decisions. Clients can make informed decisions to reduce their water and then understand if they have a leak, which can cause all sorts of other problems. And so this can be a two for one too, because the Green Home Institute inspector uh, or you, you know, need to be doing those water leak tests. But if you have one of these installed, it'll tell you right away um, for the most part, if there's a water leak. And so we can just use the information from the system if you get it up and running in, a, in an active home uh, for that. Um, so no combustion uh, fireplaces allowed um, in uh, Green Star Platinum homes. Again, there is some exceptions for climate zones four plus uh, that don't have backup systems in the in the event of a and they're all electric in the event of a power outage. If these are installed as backup systems only for safety in the winter time, that's another consideration. But we're not we're trying to remove any indoor combustion from the house at this point for both health and safety issues um, from the project. Um, next up is peak load shaving and time of use. And you can see there's our accountant who we work with in the bottom right, who has his brand new battery and solar system installed. So very cool. And so that's really the extreme end uh, of this requirement. Uh, the simplest one is to have appliances installed that can shift the load outside of peak hours. And that's really important like today, like today, if those of you who are in the Midwest, like I am, you know, our grid is being stressed and strained by this heat. And so everyone is now being asked to shift their energy use to uh, a later time at the day. So having at the very least devices that, you know, can be programmed to run the dryer, run the dishwasher, run it, uh, you know, later on uh, after the peak use is done 
that's all we're looking for at the very least. To build off that, there's all sorts of other things you can do to get badges, such as having a smart connected system to the grid, where the grid is then turning your devices on and off. Uh, and then ideally one step better than that, we're looking for homes that have solar and battery systems that then can keep the home not using energy during that peak time of use uh, event. Uh, so at the very least, like I said, appliances just need to be smart enough to be run at a later time. We know how people get, they get really busy. And so they need to be able to set those things to run once the peak usage is uh, over. Um, and then we're looking at uh, ensuring projects don't, to be platinum, don't need to have renewables or solar, and they don't need to have electric cars, but they need to be ready. So we're looking at a breaker box that needs to be installed or upgraded for future solar considerations on the project, um, and then future electric car. And then also the wiring needs to be done for the electric car. Uh, so the wiring needs to go out to the garage or out to the outside parking level or parking ramp. Uh, and if it's multifamily, you know, we need to have a conversation about, you know, the number of, of electric car uh, uh, systems there, which is an, another conversation that we can have. If, if you want to do a multifamily platinum, let us know. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we just need to see that those systems are in place and pre-wired so that it's plug and play for the solar system and for the electric car charger uh, system. So there's some details you know, in the manual um, for that. And then lastly, um, for better materials, better health, we're just looking at uh, 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 you know, all new, so this is for new construction specifically, or any new carpeting being added and any new flooring being added in a renovation project that if it's, if it's got the floor score or the green label plus or an equivalent uh, health uh, and material certification uh, on the type of flooring that is being used in the project. So like I said, um, you know, that's the platinum level. And then we're also launching a lot of our badges. Many, some of you on here have been picking up different badges that we have launched. And so we're gonna do a whole session on how to get those badges. Each of the items in the checklist will have a reference to what badge they line up with. And then there'll be additional green uh, uh, ideas being added lower down in the checklist that you can pursue. And if you pursue enough of them, you can pick up a badge at any certified level. And so we've got a couple listed here, some that we've been seeing and some that we've been working on, but that's something that can be added to your uh, certificate um, as well. And so, yeah, once you achieve your certification, we like to put together a project profile, put out a notice, put out a press release, do some tours we've done, you know, you name it, you know, let's get the word out about your project and help, um, you know, spread the word. So that is going to conclude uh, how to achieve the gold and platinum levels for Green Star Homes certification. Um, as I mentioned, uh, if you went through this whole Green Star series, you're well on your way to becoming a certified green home professional. Um, so make sure to go through the rest of the courses, uh, the basics of residential green building, the um, comparing residential green rating systems and energy rating systems, and you can pick that up. And those are some of the different pathways if you want to become a full-fledged green home inspector as well, which are the people who are going out and doing the evaluations um, of Green Star. So are there any other questions here? I appreciate those of you who stuck around a little bit longer so we could wrap up, but there any other specific uh, questions or comments for me? But yeah, I did wanna um, stress the, the, the pre-construction plan reviews, you know, certainly can be really invaluable um, and we're gonna be hosting a course on sort of the art of the pre-construction plan review. And then I mentioned on um, sort of do-it-yourself energy modeling um, and being able to take you through even your own homes and look at energy, uh, an energy rating of your own home and a green uh, rating of your own, green inspection of your own home, just to get a sense if you're on track with either your plans or your new construction project to achieving these levels and these results. 
And if it even makes sense to then go further to hire the energy rater and the assessor and us and do that. So we'll just be doing sort of webinar trainings where we walk you through on how to do those evaluations, what to look for. We may even be asking people to, you know, be in their own home and be ready to walk around and take a look at certain things. So we're planning that, especially now that the new home energy score tool has launched, but I can't really stress enough, you know, how important it is to engage either with us or one of our certified green home professionals uh, or one of our green home Institute inspectors early in the design stage to really just sort of, you know, not get to the end of the project. And we see you get to the end and people are like, well, this, what happened? Why did this happen? And, you know, we just don't want to see like the finger pointing game kind of come out, you know, why didn't we get there? So that's what we'd like to avoid. So we're here to help you figure it out. But for now, um, all the resources are up there. And so, you know, again, I wanted to um, thank uh, all of our sponsors, our um, board of directors, um, our executive director, Jose Reña, all of our volunteer speakers we've had. And, you know, we just appreciate uh, all the support here to be able to get this program up and going. Um, and again, all of our sponsors here definitely have lots of different ideas and technologies that can help you achieve these green results and these green strategies. And, you know, when it comes to Green Star 2, if you see ways that we can improve the program, resources, I just had someone send me a resource this morning that they thought would make sense as an educational material um, or any other information you can share with us on green building science that we should be incorporating in our next version of Green Star. You know, we just want to make the program better and make it make sense. So let us know uh, what ideas you have, what thoughts you have, and we'd love to hear from you. So thanks again, everyone. Um, stay cool out there, stay safe, and we'll catch you on our session next week. So take care. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.